Hello, hi, hi five people. Kelvin from London here. Uh, Stereo Review X, that's my channel. Trying to tell you everything I know really about vintage hi-fi. Uh, you know, what the bargains are, what to look out for. Today, we're gonna do a quick thing about what you should do if you don't know when you go out and you're gonna buy some vintage speakers, you're gonna pick them up or you're gonna go out to buy them. There's a few things you can do to check them out, you know. It's probably, you know, you can't put them on a test bench, but you can find a few things out. So, first thing I would say is that, in my experience, you know, and I bought a ton of speakers, I would say probably like one speaker, like that, you know, in itself, the speaker, that has a problem with it, it's probably something like one in, one in five, one in six, and, you know, where there's something significantly wrong and most times that is the tweeter is not working right quite often people you know people will sell speakers and say oh they sound fine and they don't know that the tweeter's not working maybe they do maybe they can't hear it but you know and it's probably it's the most likely thing to break do you know what i mean so i mean just so as you know you know if you are vintage speakers if they're like this this is from a big name kef you know, you'll be able to buy that tweeter on eBay, yeah? If they're famous and they were mass produced, you'll maybe have a look around, wait a while, you'll probably be able to find, you know, if it's JBL, KEF, I don't know, any big name, you know, Celestian, uh, you'll probably find it, you know what I mean? And I would always buy the right one. Personally, you know, I'd never just throw in any tweeter, for sure. You know, you see people doing that, you look at things and they put in a, another tweeter. And, you know, tweeters are designed for that crossover and to work with that speaker. You can't just throw in any tweeter. Most times it's not going to pay off. There are certain tweeters that are meant to replace like this, or certain tweeters that are really famous. They go, oh, they literally, this is the replacement for that one. Most times they're okay, but you know, nine times out of ten, you want the original tweeter. Okay, what I would do, this is what I would do. You go to a house and you want to check out the, the speakers. Hopefully they're plugged in. Hopefully there's a mono button. If there's not, doesn't matter, persevere. If you can get them to the speakers together like this and get this amp out of the way, that's the best thing you could do. So, start playing some music. Press the mono switch, and what we're going to do to find out as much as we can in this scenario, find out what we can about these tweeters, turn the bass right down, turn the treble right up, let's have some music, and then just literally go full left balance, full right balance. So you're getting a listen as much as you can to the tweeter, your bass is down, your treble is right up. So we just keep lost all my money, my woman and my pet. I gotta have your baby so for nothing less. But all my good time girls and self for happiness. Because you know I love you, baby. Yeah, you know. Okay. It's pretty good. I wouldn't say it's exactly the same. On old speakers, the chances of you putting them together, playing exactly the same signal, and they're both sounding exactly the same, are almost zero. You know, unless they've had some serious maintenance and stuff like that. I'm a bit of a hi-fi, I'm a hi-fi nut, yeah? But I will suffer a little bit of discrepancies, because you just have to, unless you're gonna really spend a load of money. I mean, the thing to know is, if the tweeters are not performing right, that is the thing you will notice first and most, and you won't be able to live with that, you know? If one bass driver is a little bit lower, quieter than the other, for whatever reason, you will probably not really get that once you're playing it, you know? But uh, the tweeter you will. So, there I do the same thing, bass driver. So let's do this. I, won't, I wouldn't go full bass. I go to about three o'clock on the bass, treble right down, and I'm going to do the same thing. It's pretty damn good. Probably not absolutely dead right, but pretty damn good. 
Now, bear in mind, if you're at someone's house and you haven't got these sitting right next to each other and one's over here in a corner and one's on a bookshelf over there, you may, they, they also, they're not going to sound the same anyway. So, you know, be aware of that. You might be going, oh, these doesn't sound the same, but you've got to take into account how they're positioned. If they're positioned very differently, you know, as I say, one against the wall, one not against the wall. And, you know, to me, a little discrepancy, it's, you know, it's kind of expected. Do you know what I mean? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, here's a really good thing to do. If you have vintage speakers, or you've just got your vintage speakers home, uh, what you want to do is, first of all, keep the screwdriver in your pocket before you start. There it is. Okay, right. This is what you want to do with vintage speakers. Tighten up this base driver, yeah? Get your Phillips screwdriver into this base driver. Give it a tighten. Now, these ones, I know, these base driver screws are into a steel sleeve, yeah? So it's steel on steel, it's like a nut and bolt. They're not all like that. Some of them are just wood screws, yeah? If you know what that's like. And that's a wood screw into chipboard. You can very easily just strip the thread and you'll just be spinning round and round. You really don't want that to happen. But if you pull these out and you see that it's basically like a steel bolt, it hasn't got a point on it, and it's KEF or monitor audio or something like that. Then you've got a steel, steel on steel and you can give those a real good tighten. And it, it could well be if you've got some old speakers, they're 50 years old. No one's tightened them up for 50 years. This can happen and you can go up to them and go and they'll just be really loose and you will be losing so much definition by that base driver in particular being really loose. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, this is just a great win-win-win. All tweeters and probably almost all mid-range units will also be wood screws, yeah? So really you don't have to tighten those up much and you know if your, teacher, if your tweeter's in firm it actually it won't affect the performance of the tweeter if it's minutely loose. It won't affect it. It will affect the bass driver, yeah? So Tighten things up, but you know, be careful that you don't over tighten. It's easily done. I've done it loads of times, thinking, oh, I want to make it tighter, it'd be better. And that's the thing I'm spinning around and around. I mean, if you were to mess up your holes for this tweeter, you could take all three screws out, rotate the whole thing a bit with the gasket behind, and screw again into three new bits of wood, yeah? and then you get a tight fix. But you know, be careful, I don't want to be responsible for people breaking stuff. Other useful thing, uh, let's say you can't hear your speakers for some reason, yeah? Or I mean, even if you could, you could try this. Now, again, be super careful here, yeah? So this cone, this base cone, it's like this, and then it has a sort of tube, like a toilet roll, yeah? With wire around it. And that fits quite in, in, a, in a small gap between a circular piece of, of magnet and the magnet around the outside, which you see when you look at the back of the speaker. And you know, that's only got a, a space of a few millimeters, yeah, maybe like three millimeters, two or three millimeters. That can get out of line, that can sag, yeah. So you can do this. If the person will let you, or you do it to your own speakers now if you want, and do this carefully, right? Don't rush it, do this carefully. Literally, equally, on the cone, yeah, on the cone, you're gonna push in and out, push in like four mil and then release. Literally four or five mil is as much as you wanna do. No big pressure, yeah, no pushing it right in, yeah? Just like four or five mil, what you should hear is absolutely nothing. That's what you're hoping to hear, nothing. If your coil has gone a bit out of line, you will hear sort of a rasping sound as the, as the coil, literally the coiled metal, hits metal, the magnet, and it will with this cone and it will make the noise, you know, you get a sort of 
slightly grinding, rasping sound. It's not always a disaster. Sometimes, once you power the thing up, the magnet gets itself into the right space, yeah? And it functions just fine. If you go up to this, if you can't, if you can't hear your speakers, and you go up to this bass driver, and it goddamn won't move, it's like rigid, like, you know, solid, yeah? That is really a very, very bad sign, yeah? That brings me the coil is bent or twisted or melted, and it isn't moving at all. I mean, again, be careful, yeah? Um, but if you have this slight rasping sound, or, you know, it's maybe underperforming a little bit because it's out of line, one thing you can do is take all four screws out and rotate this, yeah? So rotate it so the bottom becomes the top. And sometimes that can equalise the problem, you know? And it will start, and it will be functioning just fine because you know you're, you, you're using gravity in the opposite force, and sometimes that can do the trick. But uh, you know, if it sounds all right, you know, give it five, you know, listen to it as long as you can, then you're probably, you know, you're probably okay, you know, because I have speakers that I, I can get a bit of noise, I can get a bit of rubbing out, but they sound just fine once they're powered up and moving they get into the right position and they're okay. Um, anything else, anything else? Yeah, I mean, the other thing, of course, is I've done this thing with the tweeter, turn the treble up so we can hear the tweeter. Even if you're not doing that, just play your music. Let's do it here. And literally do this, you know. Literally put your ear roll right next to it. Don't squash it. If any, if you don't know, you know this is a plastic dome. If you put your finger in that, you get a dent in it. That's no fun. You can be, you can fuck it up completely, you know. Or you can watch my video about how to get dents out of tweeters. But uh, you really don't want to touch this dome. Yeah. Do not pressurize this dome in any way. And if say you had a mid range, then what you might do is carve up the tweeter and then do the full treble, say, and listen to the mid-range. You know what I mean? Because that, you know, if you've got three drivers, then it's going to be harder to tell. But you can certainly cover the tweeter with your hand, you know what I mean? You know, cupped, yeah? Don't press, don't touch it. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. But as I say, a lot of speakers are a little bit different, you know, 50 years of time, the, some of the capacitors on the... On the, on, on the crossover of change and the drivers have done a little bit of something so if they're not 100% perfect I really wouldn't be surprised not at all at all and just you know if it's five or ten percent off you I, I live I can live with it you know so uh, most people could but you know I leave it up to you but uh, expect minor discrepancies I would say and uh, okay happy hunting Okay, bye for now.